Ji, warm welcome to Back Race in a Pond. Thank you so much for joining in. And Mr. John, please let me know where you're joining in from and where you're joining in from. Let me know where you're joining in from. Let me know. Um, just a second. Give me a moment. Let me know where you're joining from. Let me know your expectations for joining tonight. Yes, those two things. Um, G, one walk. Yeah. So I'm waiting. So who's going to go first? Who's going to go? And please, when you want to speak, if you can, we'll be very grateful if you can turn on your video so we can put a face, uh, you know, the, handsome or beautiful face to the person speaking excuse me so let's let's start mr john do you want to start by introducing yourself your i mean just your name what you do and you can use the chat session yeah if you are not comfortable speaking so where you're joining from what you do and one expectation you have for tonight's session so let's start Can you hear me? Why is it feeling like nobody can hear me? We can hear your greatness. Okay, thank you. Is that Dockers? Yes. <laughs> okay, please. And if you are on any WhatsApp group, please, can you also share? I'm going to share that we are live right now. I know a lot of people try to join at nine. I apologize that we started 30 minutes behind um, the initial schedule. I sincerely apologize. Please forgive me. It was not, um, it's, it's not out of disrespect for your time. Sincerely apologize. Okay, so Dockers, please start. Dockers, where are you joining from? What do you do? And one expectation you have for tonight? Then I'll, we can take it up from others. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Dokas Anodinasi. I'm joining in from Lagos. Um, I'm into HR, and my purpose for joining tonight, it's, um, although it's, um, the topic for discussion is um, effective communication with teenagers. Um, although I didn't join for teenagers, I just joined for general communication how to be a better communicator get my ideas out and all so that's awesome. my business yes so my yeah. outcome yeah. what i ho hope to take out is be a better communicator mm -hmm. know how to push my words out there yes that's it. Ooh, amazing Thank and it's the right place because it's not only okay so maybe i should just remove that from my slide so that People don't think that it's just, um, let, let me stop sharing briefly. Um, so if you, can, if you want to speak and you want to turn on your video, please let me know. Um, please feel free rather, don't let me know. You don't need to let me know, right? Um, effective communication with, so I think we'll just remove that. Okay, great. So pass the button to someone else. So I can see Madam Senapon Bakre has turned on a video. Yes. So beautiful. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. yes I, I'm a lecturer in the university. Amazing. I jo I'm, I'm joining from Lagos. And my expectation oh. is that, you know, as a lecturer, you meet a lot of students. I like female mentorship. Mm. So, and as such, I want to have, apart from mm -hmm. lecturing that aspect, personal interactiveness with them, you know, so knowing how to communicate. Amazing with them, especially the younger ones amongst them that I know people get into university these days from age oh, 16, God. 17, yes. some 15. So one really yes. wants to be a good mentor onto them and flow with them at the level at which they will get to understand one. That's my expectation. I want to yes. learn more. I'm excited already. And Ma, I love your energy. Like your energy is just shifted. You, but should I tell you the truth? I think you're a great communicator. I love how you speak. I'm telling you. So please call someone and, and pass the button to them. Yes, I will. I will. I want to plug it on another platform of mine. Yes, oh, thank I want you. to do my platform in church. Women in church. I want okay, to do that you. now. 
very much. Thank you. So, okay. Mr. John, your video is on. Go ahead and introduce yourself. And go ahead. This is uh, Sonapo has not passed the button. Why are you jumping the gun? I am passing the button. <laughs> no, Mr. Mr. John. That's Mr. John, please communication. Have the that's not I'm effective not communication. You gave her communication <laughs> and you're not communicating. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now. Okay, I'm um, John Samuel, uh, currently in the United Kingdom and a youth engagement coach. And I joined because in various parts of the world, they give say youth, some say between 16 to 25, some say between UN says it's 16 to 25. Some see it between 13 to, in Africa, we see it even up to 30, 40 years. We see they are the adolescents. And, but tonight, what do I have to learn from me to interact more, to be able to uh, be a better communicator, both online and virtually, because I we're on both sections, and also to support my wonderful boss lady. <laughs> Thank you so much. And here is lovely. And I <laughs> like the background. Thank you. Share some you. love so that we to be chopping this small life. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know you are live on YouTube. You're just a troublesome human being. That's all I will say. Um, so pass the button, Mr. John. Please pass the button to someone else, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, I pass the button to Chisong Aqua Butter. Let's see. We're mm. going to, okay, it's five minutes already, and I'm going to, I'm just looking out for Mr. Namdi. Once it joins in, I'm definitely going to start, or I'll start, and I'll pause my presentation immediately. Um, I see he's on the call, so. Who okay, did you I pass said that uh, she's on. Maybe if she's not, then Claire, one are you? Oh, Madam Claire. Madam Claire is there. I can see yes. her. Oh, my God. She's my boss. So, ah, that's my ah, Sorry, Madam Claire. Let me give Madam, her respect. Please, let me see you. Let me see your voice. Madam Claire, <laughs> are you there? I'm good. I'm here. Good evening. Good evening, Ma. How are you? I'm great. It was great to see you, like, and her also some, some few minutes ago. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, so once so we have introduction, go ahead. Okay, so you just want an introduction. I just joined. So um. Okay. So, so my name is my name is Claire Onwayo. Exactly. What you do? What do you do? Okay. So I work for a research firm. We do a lot of research in the area of health. I support the team. I'm not a scientist. Um, I have three children. One is still a teenager. He's 16 now. I also um, anchor a radio program. Oh, great. Um, Part-time. Oh, great. Um, the radio program is about family life. Oh, wow. So I, I guess woman. I have a lot to learn here. Yes, you do. You do. And you've not invited me to come and speak on your radio program. I'm <laughs> will, will, you talk, will you talk free? It's um... Yes, 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 for you. We can take it off. <laughs> because I don't want to start calling me now. No problem. <laughs> we'll have a discussion. <laughs> well, <for you>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining in. Okay, so um, should we just give three more minutes because of people that are Zoomed, that try to join at 9.30? Um, uh, sorry, pardon me, at 9 um, and couldn't join. Please, um, do we give three more minutes? But I promise you on the dot of 9.40, we're going to start. Um, so if you know someone that needs to be here, this is the best time for you to just tell that person, share the, the, the link that we are live. And trust me, this is, I've cooked this food for you. You know, initially, you know, when you cook something that is going to be paid, you would have put so much energy. Then when God now tell you that, ah, my darling, my darling, is not, <laughs> not a paid something. 
All right, so, so let's get into it. Um, so let me acknowledge people that, have, that I have not yet acknowledged initially. I can see Madam Sheyi Onas, thank you for joining. Madam Oluwa, Mr. or Madam Oluwa Timilei Babi Jo. Please, if I model your name, forgive me. I am terrible with some names. Please forgive me. Ade Inka Ade Omi, that was easy. Eloha, thank you for joining. Ife Oluwa, thank you for joining. Abiola Latunji, Favor, thank you for joining. Favor, please remind IJ to join in. And we are ready to start. Okay, so in the comment section, if you still want to introduce yourself, tell us your name, where you're joining from, what you do, and one expectation you have tonight, please feel free to do that. I will be sharing my screen right now and getting straight into the meat of it. So who is excited? Let me see your excitement. Let me feel your energy in the comment section. If you're excited about tonight. Ten, two, share my screen. What happened to my screen? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, good evening, Favor. Good to read from you. All right, so I'm sure you can see my screen now. Yes, okay. I'm sure you can see my screen now. So I will be, um, once I see Mr. Nnamdi on the call, Mr. Nnamdi Oboli on the call, I will pause my presentation and I will hand over to him. So I'm looking out for him. Once I see him join, I will pause my presentation and allow him to take over. Um, because of course, he's a married man. I respect married people. It's not easy to be married because you have you are committed to somebody. Me, I'm still happily single. I'm waiting for my white husband <laughs> to mingle. So one welcome to you. Um, Pardon me, did I just, yes. So he is going to be speaking to the spouse, to the married people, on to everybody on the call on how to communicate with your spouse. Um, how to, so if you're in a relationship or you are married, he's going to be speaking more to the married people, right? But I'll be speaking to you on how to engage the younger generation because that is what I've been doing for over eight years. I was trained by the United Nations and I emerged as my meritorious peer education trainer and most influential peer education trainer. And my final assessment was on communication. So I love communication. Also, I am a member of Toastmasters International. And you know that that is the global, globally recognized body for public speaking. So who am I? Yeah, some of the things I said might not be on this um, profile because I didn't edit it. I used this at the Lagos Business School where I facilitated the training. Um, so I'm an author of four books. Let me see if I can show you my books. Just a second. Okay. So I have two books in soft copy and two in art copy. Um, this is the first one, this is the second one. Rescued by Love, Why I Cancelled My Wedding, and From Lemon to Lemonade, How to Use Your Pain to Unleash Your Greatness. And 31 Life Lessons at 31, 32 Life Lessons at 32. I'm sure someone knows my age by now. Yes, I'm 32 years old. I'm just a very small girl. And thank you. Good evening, Juliet. Good to see you. Welcome. I'm a certified master marriage mentor and counselor from the United States of America. I'm a professional coach, therapist, and counselor. Like I said earlier, I'm a UN trained life skills trainer and sex educator for teenagers and young adults. I'm also a United Nations trained gender advocate. Okay, so Mr. Nnamdi is here. I'll just finish on this slide and I will hand over to him. I'm a licensed HR professional um, with the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, um, Nigeria. And recently, I want to say thank you to everyone that elected me as the Assistant General Secretary of the Abuja chapter. Um, I'm an on-air personality, so you see me on radio, TV, Google my name, you're going to see some of the interviews that I've done. And I've produced the film and I emerged as one of the best producers from Ebony Life Creative Academy. 
I'm also a certified business development associate from the Enterprise Development Center, Pan Atlantic University. And I'll just talk on this. I'm a certified nonprofit management for senior executives from the Lagos Business School, specifically the Sustainability Center. So I'm going to pause here. As I said earlier, I told you that once Mr. Namdi joins the call, I'm going to pause and allow him to speak. And then you can ask him questions on communicating with your spouse, with your relationship partner, whatever it is. And we'll come back to my slide. So let me run you through my slide. So you can see my slide is loaded. Like this is cooked meal for you. So don't go anywhere. Don't say, ah, Mr. Anamdi is a celebrity. This greatness is up and coming. I know I'm up and coming. I respect myself. But please, I have prepared cooked meal for you. Stay on the call to the end and you'll get value for your time. I promise you. All right. So once again, I want to say thank you for joining in. You could be anywhere else on a Thursday evening, 9.44 p.m. You chose to be here. I want to say thank you very much. And so, Mr. Namdi, I want to spotlight you. Is your video on? Yes, my uh, video is on. Yeah. Okay, good to see you, Daddy. <laughs> yes. So, guys, I used to say that. Um, just a second. Okay, so I think it's added to the spotlight. Okay. All right. Yeah, great. Right. So I'm going to be, we're going to be, I'm going to allow him to speak for some few minutes on effective communication with your spouse. And then you can ask him questions. Um, please feel free to use the comment or the chat session if you don't want to talk. But preferably, we'd we'll love you to turn on your video so that we can put a face to your name if you want to talk. and. Right now, so let me tell you summary. It doesn't like long profile. It's not all those people that likes you reading their profile. But Mr. Anandi Oboli is, as in a medical, is an optometrist. <clears throat> that am I right? Yes. Yeah. 24 years before he switched into tech. So now he's into tech. And he resides in Canada with his lovely family. Uh, recently, he has not even watched that one for me. He just became... <laughs> It's just, you know, Canada. I don't even know he's going to celebrate it for me. But anyway, and of course, you know his lovely wife, Mrs. Omonio Boli, the famous actress. And they've been married for over 23 years. And so you are not just hearing theory, you're hearing practical. Over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Greatness, uh, for having me. And um, hello, everybody. Um, it would be nice to actually put faces to everybody, but that'll be, for those who can actually put their camera on, that'll be great because I want to make it kind of interactive. So we're talking to each other when it comes to communicating. We start by communicating with each other, actually, as we have come into this meeting. So that's the first part of communicating. Um, when it, a social media age where I've seen couples actually communicate through the phones, while they are both in the bedrooms and they are laughing at each other and they are talking with each other through their <laughs> devices. So we're in that generation. So it's always good to put a face uh, to people as they are seeing each other. And that way we know that we're interacting with each other. That's it. So communicating, effective communication. And uh, thank you, uh, Greatness, for all that. Um, this is my 23rd year that we're going into marriage, actually. So... Um, and we have three boys, uh, the last of which today happens to be his 18th birthday. So basically, I don't have any young, well, yeah. boys now. They're all adults in the let's, house right now. <laughs> let us all say happy birthday to him, please. I beg you. Uh, no worry. You can, he's not here, but he would, <laughs> I will take it back to him. You will listen Wait, to the <laughs> So can we drop happy birthday to I'm just, so what is his name? What's his name? His name is Cheesy. Okay, so happy birthday, Cheesy. Long for few Happy life. birthday, Cheesy. Thank you <laughs> oh, very, very, very much. Thank you. Dad. That's from Sanapon Bakre. Okay. <laughs> thank you very happy much. Happy birthday, Cheesy, from John. Okay. John, thank you. Okay. Yeah, right, thank sir. you all so much. All right. So the, the issue is that we're coming here talking about effective communication. Here's what I talk about when it comes to communication. The first thing you have to understand and realize our communication is, first and foremost, you don't have a marriage without it. Forget mm. every other thing. It's the number one thing. You have to communicate. 
we had to do a lot of communication for greatness to be able to have this whole package together. Now imagine if she said, oh, we're having something someday. And she gives me a vague thing. Nobody will be here assembled in this organized uh, um, kind of uh, meeting right now without that effective communication. And communication is something that I don't understand it about people, but this is what happens to many of us. There seems to be a way that we deal with life, businesses, school, you know, the day-to-day -day living. But as soon as it comes to two aspects of our lives, marriage and politics, there's a suspension of disbelief. It's as if we're watching a movie. We're ready to believe anything. We're, we're re ready to believe fairy tales. And it's like anything goes. But that's not what happens in an effective marriage. Marriage is a deliberate action by two responsible adults to effect a change and to manage their two lives, two thought processes, so that they can have an accomplished goal of a happy marriage. You cannot have an accomplished goal of a happy marriage unless you are deliberate in your actions towards it. There's no business that functions without communication within the groups, within the different heads. There's a head of department. There's a smaller head of department. It, it goes down the line, but all through the thing, the, the thread that runs through it is communication, either through emails or meetings or whatever it is, or appraisals or assessment. There's verbal and there's nonverbal communication. So with your spouse, all through that period, remember, before you go into marriage, what is the first thing that they give you? When you finish the ceremony, they give you a certificate. What is the last thing they give you when you finish schooling? They give you a certificate. So marriage kind of has it backwards. They give you the certificate before you go into the education of it. Many of us are going to be educated for the first time about marriage within that context of marriage. So you're having a, a, a certificate. How do you effect to earn that certificate? Now it depends on you. They're basically giving you a certificate and telling you, write what you are going to be. What is your score at the end of the day, at the end of your marriage? For us, many of us score ourselves high and they will start downgrading over time. While some, the good ones, are those who have at least maintained average to higher at the end of their marriage. So communication is something that we must take very, very seriously. And communication is one thing. It's on, it's, when we talk about the verbal, verbal is, first of all, airing your, your views about life so that the other person can understand who you are, not hiding yourself so that they will start guessing who you are. There's nothing attractive in and of itself about hiding who you are so that the other person will keep on guessing. I know people like to play those games. You know what? I, I don't want to give myself too much. You're already in it. There's no too much you're going to give. You're already there. Your, your entire body and your life is already in the hands of somebody else. And you've put, you've entrusted your care into them. If you don't think there's a lot of trust that involves the couple when they come together. Your woman is cooking your meal. You have to really trust somebody to be giving you a meal, to close your eyes and sleep. Some people have woken up dead. And I'm using that as an oxymoron because you can't wake up dead. But the point is, there are many people who have gone through marriage and come out maimed. A man had acid poured over his private parts by his wife. Another one cut off his own. A woman has been stabbed to death just while she slept by the husband. So when we think about the immense trust we have to put to this person, put, to give to this person with our entire life, I wonder why people would treat it so trivially not to communicate right, not to be sure of what they are building up. And communication is also what determines your returns on your investment. Every word you speak into that person's life is a seed. It's an investment. And once you put that investment, your returns will be determined by what you put in. If you sow anything you sow, you're going to reap it at the end of the day. You cannot say that you have a bad marriage and point the fingers to the one receiving the seed of your own contributions into it without looking back at what kind of seed are you planting as well. And those seeds of communication, that is the verbal and non-verbal. Non-verbal sometimes is being able to listen to the other person's part, being able to read what the person is actually not saying or not able to communicate. Because here's the thing about life. Every one of us have our siblings. 
we still quarrel with them. We still quarrel with our parents, even though we've known them for the most part of our lives, at least for early marriages, until you get to the point where you now become, you've married for much longer than when you were in it. Like my wife, for instance, she has been with me longer than she had been with her parents in her life. But that's not, the, the, the point is that you're going to have to learn about this person. You're going to get, get a PhD in understanding who this person is, even when they're not saying it with words but they are communicating it through their actions and their behavior around you and outside of you. You have to be able to vouch for them regardless of what it is that people come to tell you that you know for sure this is, not, this is my wife or this is my husband or this is not my wife or this is not my husband. Communication is key in every single thing. God communicates with us because there's no way we can know him unless he communicates with us. It's impossible to know him. The same way, when we're talking to our spouses, there's so much they can learn. We are, most times, we, we're expecting the man or the woman to be God in our lives, to know the end from the beginning, to know all things, to be omniscient in their knowledge. They can't. Many of the things that they, do, they know about you are things that they picked up from what you have said and the actions that you have done. So communication is so important that I don't know why people don't invest so much into what they will put into it. It's what you want out there. You want a happy marriage? Then what are you saying? What are you communicating through your actions? How are you putting the person up or putting the person down? Your actions will tell. Sometimes your words are nice and sweet, but your actions are horrible. Sometimes your actions are nice and sweet, but your words come out wrong. You should be able to read that person enough to be able to say, this is the person's character and I can manage it or I cannot manage it. If I can't manage it, then you don't have a marriage. It's basically you're on the way out. But if you must manage it, like, like every responsible adult should do, unless it's a life-threatening thing, every other thing can be managed. It's a decision. Sometimes, So many times, the problem with our marriages are always... Or die, or I, just, I put it like this, that we sacrifice our marriages on the altar of our personal preferences. This is how I want to see it. This is how I want to hear and understand and interpret what you just said, rather than what is the person saying. I'm, I'm a big advocate for trying to understand what someone is saying, rather than what I think the person is saying. I don't try to put it to the person, this is what you are saying. No, I want to ask, what exactly are you saying? So that when I repeat it back to you, you should be able to say, that's what I meant. It means that's the first part of communication is to understand what the other person is actually saying. Don't try and read something else or your own because we all have our biases. We come from homes. And usually with our siblings, they've gone through the motion so many years to understand what we say and what we do not say. And because our siblings have accepted us, there are some behaviors that are not good that you will bring to the table in your relationship. But now it's fresh eyes that are looking at that same behavior that your siblings have agreed and said, okay, this is the person. This is, she's a very nice, she will tell, oh, she's a very nice person. But there's some nasty attitudes that you have as a man or a woman that the stranger who is not used to it is suddenly seen and then they start attacking and you start saying, ah, but this is how I've always been now. Maybe your spouse is there to put that check on it. So when you're communicating, make sure that you're also receiving communication from others as well. It's very, very important to hear what people are saying about you and what you are saying to them as well. It's very, very key to every growth in a relationship that your returns on investment, knowing that it's based on what you sow into it. It's going to largely depend on what you are going to put into it as well. So if you want a good returns on investment, because I want you to look at it, I'm, I keep using the word investment because so many times we look at our businesses and we want to partner with somebody to do business. So we vet them, we want to find out what kind of person they are. We want to know what kind of background, are they trustworthy, are they this or that? And then when we come to the union, we're, we're, we're clear about what our rules are. This is what it is. This is this. You have, oh, these are your strengths. These are your weaknesses. Let's do this and do that. But as soon as it comes to marriage, boom, everybody just, the woman is fantastic in managing and, and as an administrator. 
but you want her to be something else. You want her to be a cook. She's terrible as an administrator, but she's demanding to be the administrator instead of the housewife. There's no better rule or a worse rule. Whenever we start putting down one rule over the other, we start losing out because most of the time, what we're communicating to the other person is that I'm less than, I'm, I have less value when I'm not like greatness. Or I am less valuable or I'm more valuable because I am not like greatness. So it's not a comparison thing. It's you trying to make it as individual as possible. Take the responsibility of understanding your spouse and what their individual needs are because no two women are the same. And you should not treat all women the same way. So don't communicate as if you are communicating to a stranger when you're looking at your wife and thinking you're communicating to all women. You know, you women are like this. You men are like that. The same thing happens all through. We begin to communicate in such a way that we lose the person in front of us because we like to put things in boxes. Human beings feel it's easier to deal with things in a group and, a, and boxes. That's why politicians will put you in a box. They'll put you in groups, tribal, religious, or whatever groups, because it's easier to deal with groups than to deal with individuals. Individual takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of work to do that. So what they do is put you in a box. The same way men, women, oh, you just meet the guy. The guy has just said something. But instead of dealing with what that specific need of that person said, or your husband just said, do you know what you do? You say, all men are doing. That's how you guys do this. That's how, no. What is this person doing? That's far more important. Sorry, I think someone's um, mic is on. And I can hear uh, somebody's um, thing on something. Okay. So, so I was actually going to ask you if someone was watching a TV in the okay. house. No, no, no. Because no, I one's mic is off yeah. and I can't see where the noise was coming from. It's still weird. Yes, yeah, so it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. So someone is raising her hand. Um, do you want to continue before? I don't know if she has a question. Yeah, if they have any questions, yes. Anybody can ask right now. That would be great. Zaj, do you have a question? Oh, um, Zaj Okomo. I'm sorry. I think I mistakenly pressed on my Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. That's fine. Right. That's fine. So, but if you have questions, you can start sending them here. He's ready to take questions. Um, he's not a man of so many words, but he's a man of so many words. I, I, I hope you get it. If you don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, yeah. so I'll share for some five more minutes. Um, if there are no questions for now, I can't see any question. Do we have any question before we proceed? Any questions? And guess what? Let me tell you guys, he has a book. So my the person, my friend that packed for me, so I cannot say, let me just open confession. I don't know how to do anything feminine traditionally. I don't know how to do it. I outsource everything <laughs> and I just do the one I love to do, which is my work. So the person that packed for me forgot to put his book in my bag. Um, Mr. Namdi Oboli has a book, Marriage for Better For. The worst was cancelled and they wrote us. So I can share my screen for you to see um, that on Kindle. It's on Kindle. If you go to his Instagram at Namdi Oboli, um, it will take you to the Instagram, uh, the Kindle version. However, if you reside in Lagos or Abuja, you can get the ad copy for 7,500 naira, exclusive of delivery fee. So you can actually pick it. Um, the pickup point is at Lucky Phase 1. So just send me a message. You should have my number. If you don't have my number, I'll just drop it. Um, just send me a DM on Instagram at GreatnessATO or send me a message here to say, I want Mr. Nam this book. And then uh, you will get it. So he has written a book and the chapter 12 was actually focused on communication. Um, yes. So you want to get that book and trust me, you're going to love it. Um, right. We still have one session and, and please don't go anywhere. Um, that is majorly for the upcoming generation. That's those that want to engage the teenagers, the Gen Zs, you know. So are there any questions before... We allow Mr. Nami to go and continue birthday celebration with his son. I mean, if I'm the one that my son is 18, 18 year old, 
today. I'm not sure I will be a guest speaker on the show, but so I'm learning from you. I'm learning from the best. <laughs> well, so, sir, do you want to share for another five minutes? Um, since yeah, let me just uh, yeah, let me just wrap up on on that and see. So, the key thing about the whole thing is, you want your marriage to work. Your marriage will not all will not work on the basis of what only you think it's good for the marriage. It has to is a concerted effort between you, a man, and his wife. And both of them have an input and value to bring to the children. The children are going to observe you. If the woman is too docile, in most cases, you're going to produce the same kind of daughter. When I mean too docile, I'm not talking about docility in terms of, oh, she's just a quiet person. There are some people who are just quiet. But docile in terms of she, she's subdued. She doesn't communicate because she's afraid to communicate. Or the man is afraid to say what he really thinks because any small thing, the woman is jumping. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And instead of just explaining himself every single time, he just keeps quiet and says, you know what? Nothing, there's nothing there. Once you kill the line of communication, that's the end of you. There are so many things. It means that somebody is suffering to keep that marriage alive. And that person is not you, the one who is doing that. It's the other person that is doing it. And so often, many marriages get into that place. You know, we hear things like, ah, oh, she just suddenly changed. Or oh, he just suddenly changed. It was not like that. Oh. No, he's been like that. It's just that he couldn't communicate with you. And since he couldn't, he got to a point whereby, you know what? He just wasn't having fun in the relationship anymore and decided, this is it. Then you now hear of irreconcilable differences. It, every problem that comes out in the public or ends up in a divorce or something always begins with a seed that is sown wrongly. And usually it's something we've ignored. We do not communicate it right. And we do not want communication right. Too many times people are too afraid to be, to be confrontational. So they don't say what they think. They don't communicate right. They don't want to understand. They don't want the other person to hear their point of view or they don't want the other person's point of view heard. They're quick to shout that one down, that we, to put you down. So communication has already been broken even before the communication starts. So the marriage is now working on thin ice, basically. The marriage is that kind of marriage where we're just there because we're husband and wife. We don't really have anything in common. We're not looking for commonalities. And I'm not saying that commonalities always makes a marriage thrive. It doesn't. Because there are people who have things in common that are just still horrible marriages. But the, is the respect, the mutual respect and communication, at least even if I don't have something in common, I understand what you want and you understand what I want. And I'm free to communicate it. I'm free in my own home. Not that I'm working on eggshells because I'm, uh, if, for instance, for many of them living here abroad who are like, ah, before my wife go and throw me out of my house, kind of thing. You're sending the wrong signals. You're always threatening if you do this, my marriage, that, that, that means the marriage is going to end. Every small thing you're threatening with the marriage, you're using my One day, the person will call your bluff and say, okay, let the marriage go end. And then it's like, because they're tired or they've met somebody else who is communicating right with them. And they are, they, are, they are doing, they are comparing and contrasting your own because that one, they can talk to that person and be frank with them. I know that stolen water is sweet, the Bible says. That means that one that you're getting outside sometimes can be so sweet that you think the grass is greener somewhere else. And that would affect the one that is not happening in his own home or in her own home. And they say the wise woman builds her home, but the foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. The same thing with a man. So many times we don't want to hear what the other person is saying. And I'm not talking about just the verbal things. Someone tells you something, you just jump, no, ah, how can you even think of doing th that? Or how can you and it took, it's gone that person doesn't tell you anymore just pray that no other woman comes and offers him what he just asked you to have a listening ear because if that happens he's going to look at that and enjoy it and that will be the end she's going to look at that and enjoy it and that will be the end of the marriage sometimes the marriage does not end by divorce Sometimes it's a dead marriage. Two of you are just living in carcasses in the home. You're not enjoying it. You're not, it's not fun. You're just there. I've seen that happen so many times. And the man, out of frustration, many of those men die of depression. Many of the women die of depression. 
So communication is something you must do. Make sure it's always done and it's constant, it's deliberate. You reach out to your spouse. You want to know what they are thinking, what they are saying. Don't always read the meaning into what they are saying. And another thing that always bothers people, and this is a major problem in many places, is the how you are saying it. The how is not as important as the what you're saying. What you're saying is should be of more value to you than the how they are saying it. Because so many times when people are expressing something, they always it always comes with one emotion or the other, either joy or anger or whatever, or pain. Whatever it is, look beyond the presentation to hear what they are saying. Because what they are saying is what you should be worried about more than how they are saying it. Because you see people shut down because they say, ah, yes, what you're saying is true. I, I, I get it. But look at how you said it. What has how you said it got to do with the fact that there's something profound that has been said? Then the issue now becomes about the how. They will quarrel about the how you said it for so long that they forget what the person actually said. And that what is still hanging. <laughs> so get true. into the what. Yeah. Make it clear what you want. Try and understand what the person is saying. Yes, the person is angry and they're pouring out their heart and you're saying, okay, so what you're saying is this. Make it clear so that the person can communicate what they're saying. Rather than when you now get it, it's not that you are a robot, that you'll not be affected by their, by their emotions and the way they are presenting it. That's not the point. The point is that you are actively trying to get what they are saying. I mean, the Bible tells us that we should be quick to hear, be slow to speak and be slow to anger. That means hear it well. Don't ignore what people are saying because it, you have to catch all the nuances of what they are saying. So that you, because you are building a relationship here and you need to know what is going on in, their person, in that person's world. Because that's the person mm -hmm. you're sleeping with. That's the person you're eating with. That's the person you are raising children with. You need to know what they are, what's going on in your head. Then be slow to speak. Means that you are trying to understand first and foremost what they just said. Digest it. Don't react first. Because it, the slow to sit is to control that. Uh, the slow to speak is to control that first reaction to try and say something back. Or to react to the how they said it. Because usually the speed at which you answer is based on how they said it. Or want to get the last word in. There are many times people want to get the last one. And I'm talking especially for women. They want to get the last word in. They want to be the one to finish this. Then, uh, okay, I said it last. Then when I rest, okay, you had the last word. Did you actually get the to the point of that whole thing? Did you address the issues? Or you were more fixated on whether you were heard last? Remember, mm -hmm. the one who is heard last does not necessarily translate to you. are the one that is right. Would you rather be right or would you rather have the last say? It's something you have to ask yourself. Because at the end of the day, guess what is suffering? Your marriage. It's your marriage. It's your joy. It's your happiness. Are you interested in your marriage or you're interested in how I see my marriage? I want to see it mm. in this way. Or is it the, you want to get to the basic point? Am I actually getting the, the real substance and enjoying the real substance? Or I've painted a picture of how it will look. And most of the pictures we paint are based on what other people communicate to us, what the boys think, what the girls think, so that people will envy us or all that. But it's not really your joy. It's not the very thing that makes you happy in a home. So communication is very key. What you sow mm -hmm. is what you're going to reap. You have to be careful about mm -hmm. what you sow into other people's lives especially your spouse. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We have plenty of questions now. Suddenly from no questions to plenty of questions. So first of all, I see Mr. John's hands up. Mr. John, do you want to ask your question? Please turn on your video <clears throat> and you can go ahead. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Thank you so much, Mr. Inundi, for that wealth of knowledge and for the sacrifice which is something <laughs> and that you are supposed to be in a celebration mode but you still find that time to come and wow it's hardly real yeah. off but now let me just go just say mm -hmm. some clarifications I want you are talking about uh, communication and being uh, intentional about that anything you do plays a significant role in anything one does so how do you place when you are trying to reach a compromise and being heard about what is happening around you, 
Because there's one thing for you to be intentional. There's another thing for you to be heard. You were saying in your last comment about, uh, do you want to have the last word or do you want what is right? So there are sometimes some people just keep quiet, not because they don't, but for the sake of compromise. So how do you balance all those things? Thank you. All right. Yeah. When we say it to be we, the the first and foremost thing is people forget that it's a relationship they are building when they are communicating. That's the first and key thing that people forget. I've known that for many couples, they are far more interested in their egos and their pride than the relationship itself. Remember, when you're with your wife, you're both naked and not ashamed. That means you're open to each other. You're supposed to bear all yourself. Some men still want to play the mysterious guy in their home. Because that's what made them look cool when they were single. It's not working in your relationship. She has seen everything. He has seen everything. So try and enjoy the moment and see that, okay, the person has chosen to be with you. So why don't you just communicate right? And sometimes we let it go because in every aspect of your relationship, at one point or the other, one person is going to be the weaker and the other person is going to be the stronger person. You have to recognize that. Anytime you find that you are the one who is able to let it go at the moment, then it means that you are the one who is the stronger person at that moment. There are some places where I'm weaker than my wife and there are some places I'm stronger than her. And in those moments, we just accept what it is and just move on. She will try and change me and I'm like, I don't understand why you're even trying to bother me because this is what I am. So it's, it's just what I do. And then there are some places I've tried and... I've just resigned myself and said, that's, I've tried, it's not going to work. We've quarreled about it. In fact, some pl sometimes in the future, sometime in the future, after all that quarrel initially, and I realized that it is such a part, an integral part of who she is that I've come mm -hmm. to identify her as do, with those characters that I don't even want it to change anymore. So if we don't, because we are not God, we don't, we can't say we have the full grasp on every single aspect of another person's life. We don't. That's why we're constantly bouncing back. But it's when we don't communicate that we don't get that uh, picture. But having a last laugh, there's also a time not to back down. That's when it comes to the level of priority. Is it a serious matter or not? Some things are not priority in life. They're not really that serious. But we want to have the last laugh. We want to have the last word. Why? It's not important. If it's something that's really that important, you will have to discuss it. And you cannot shove it under the, the bed. It's something that you must call and say, let us discuss this thing. It is that important. And you present it in such a way that, look, we must talk about this. In those places, I don't let my wife, my wife knows I won't let go. When she has finished all the rant, I say, have you finished? Okay. But we need to discuss this matter because I don't like this. And the same thing with her. She will let me go. Oh, well, then she will not say, okay, no, I have to. I don't really agree with this thing. Think about it. Let us discuss this thing. Let's matter you begin to see the seriousness, especially when she's coming down and trying to understand what it is that was it. So I know my perspective because it's that important. Everybody knows the threshold of their spouse. But you also know when to push the boundaries. So don't push the boundaries. Don't use, don't play the, the joker until it is necessary to do it. In other times, just let it go because it's basically your ego that is at first. Okay, you want to go out should we go to this place or that place? And your ego is saying, no, I, I've already said it. I want to go here. It doesn't matter. It's just, so, it's just a venue. It doesn't have any existential uh, threat to your marriage. So, so knowing when is prioritizing what those things are. If it's a decision that you have to take that is going to affect you guys and your finances and all that, then you must have a serious talk about it. But you must bounce off each other because both of you have a stake in it. It's not like one person is just saying, do it. And if you crumble, I'm not going to be affected. No, every, simple, every person in that relationship has a stake in it. So respect their decisions as well. But if it comes to the mundane things like, um, you know, like which school your child go to and all that, it's not really that, it's not that serious. Not to the point of affecting your marriage, because those things are not your marriage. Your finances are not your marriage. Your children are not your marriage. You are the marriage. They said the, the man shall leave his father and mother and the two shall join to the, the wife and the two shall become one. Not the three, not the four, not the five, not the not the finances or anything else. Because some people may be poor, they, they can still get married. So finances don't define the marriage. Marriage is separate from all the other entities. Those other things are benefits. 
of marriage. And if the marriage is good, those things will be managed well. Because there are many people who are poor, get married, and when they get rich, they get divorced. While there are some who are rich when they get married, when they get poorer, they get divorced. So those ones are people who have allowed their situation to affect their marriage. Rather than marriage to infect their situations to such a way that every single thing they add into their home is a source of joy, is a source of creating new memories. It's not something that affects their marriage itself. They know how to communicate with themselves without having the, the threat of other things coming into it. So being able to separate and prioritize things will define where, who has the last laugh or who has the last say in every situation. When, know when to recognize and know when to let go. That's what I'm saying. Amazing. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you so much. Next question is by Titi Lori. Um, pardon me. She says, do you have any tips to help with understanding the less vocal partner as it may involve picking up non-verbal cues? <laughs> Does that question make sense? Okay. Do you understand the hey, please, can we stay muted? Um, okay, I'm trying to, I'll just mute the person from here. So did you understand the question? Do you want me to repeat the question? Yeah, I, I, I get the question. So here's the thing. This is how you look at it, first and foremost. There's a less yes. verbal partner. You hey, married them. I forgot to make my phone a co-host. I apologize. Please just give me a moment. I okay. think she's not with her phone. Maybe she's frying plantain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we usually say um, when people are not engaging. Okay, she's muted now. Go ahead, sir. Okay. All right. So um, based on the question, there's always one partner that has Whatever, whether it's the less vocal or the more vocal one, you have to be able to deal with partners as individuals. That means you know them, you study them, you marry them anyway. You should have known that about them. You should have known that this is how they behave. Uh, let me use the example of my parents. My parents, my dad was the non-verbal one. He was, they could speak for three hours. And my dad would probably say like three or four sentences in the entire three hours. My mom is doing all the talking. But that was communication because later in life, they started communicating even much more when he retired, when he got older. And the reason they did that was because all her experiences, she was sharing it with him and then drawing out a few of his own experiences, even when he wasn't verbal. The, re the whole idea, the value for me I saw in that was, I saw that they could. she was bridging the gap between her going to work, coming back, not knowing what happened in his own workspace. So she fills him in with everything that happens that day. And then he fills her in, in his limited words with a few of the things that happened that day. In their old age, you see them discussing things that happened in the past and they will laugh together because they shared those experiences. So don't ignore the less vocal, verbal ones or vocal ones because they don't talk. There's a way to draw them out. You learn their language. You begin to understand what they did that, okay, just ask simple questions. Oh, what happened today? Is the non-threatening question. What did you do today? If, the, if it gets to the point where they are pushing, pushing you off and all that, then it's something else that is doing it. It's now, there's an underlying problem that needs to be dealt with. But generally, less verbal doesn't mean that you should not approach them because they don't talk. If you don't ask, you're not going to get any information from the person. So ask, talk to them, and they will talk to you. I see. So the, the key basically is asking them and also to observe them such that there is one of my slides, something in my slide that says, we are actually always communicating. Um, is the other person, the, the, the receiver, that needs to pay attention to be able to decode the message correctly. I, I, I'm just hoping we can still get to my slides tonight, but I promise you, if you stay to the end, I will. So someone says, Ada Onyeri says, we know of love languages. How do you see this related to the topic of communication with spouses? Okay, I'm not a big fan of love languages and all those things because it's kind really? of puts it puts people in a box. It forces something into people's life that make them think in that fashion. I'm a very strong advocate for individual recognition. Try and know your own spouse's idea of what they define as love and romance. Because I've seen people try and force what is your love language? And the guy is thinking, I don't have a love language. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just doesn't have a love language. <laughs> Yet he's in love with his wife, but he doesn't know how to express that love or have it expressed to him in such a way that he just enjoys the person being around. So when we're trying to force it, I've seen people quarrel over, he doesn't know my love language. Okay, he's the kind of person that does not read those things, but he cares for you. He provides for you. He listens to you. He does everything. But he doesn't, he's clueless about this definition and box that you're putting him called mm. the love language. I'm not saying that there are no mm. values to having long language, but mm. I think people are more fixated on things that put human beings in boxes, in groups, in tribes, than actually dealing with greatness or, or John or favor in that light. I want to know what favor is thinking. What constitutes romance? To them i've seen people lie about their love languages they'll tell you i like romance and flowers they have no clue what how to maintain a flower or what even the value has to them <laughs> but they are just trying to flow along with i have, must have a love i must pick one because there's a peer pressure to have a love language i'm not saying that people do not have love languages but i think human beings are so not monolithic in their thought processes that you can start putting mm. them in boxes and then defining yes. two people sitting down over themselves and drinking Gary with granite and ice is romance to that village couple. But you're Thank saying you. he's not, you're saying he's not romantic because he didn't yeah. light can he didn't light candle. He doesn't see candle <laughs> as romantic because candle is his normal light. Nepa yes. takes light all the time. So candle is not a romantic sig- In fact, it signifies <laughs> poverty to him. <laughs> so let's not let's not put ourselves in the boxes of trying to get into the 12 steps to better marriage or all those other things get to the principle of marriage understand your spouse understand what makes them tick don't try and force a definition of outside and then start asking them what is your love language? or you spend so much time trying to find their love language you forget to listen to what they are saying to you mm. because you're trying to compartmentalize what they are doing and their behaviors and to classify it under a few love languages or five, I think. And then you, f- you miss the whole boat of w- another direction where they are going. When they say, this is my own, this is my direction. This is where I like. I just like this. So as much as I am not against those who actually have a long wa- love, love language, if you do, fantastic. That means you can communicate it well. But don't put yourself in that box. Don't limit yourself because you will go so wrong. I've seen many marriages that have suffered. Relationships have suffered because the spouses could not define them under the ages of what the world says. You must have one of these. Yeah. Deal with individuals where they are. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. The um, Okay. Someone said, I want to have that being natural and getting to understand what you call love language. I want you heard that being natural and getting to understand what you call love language and develop yours, what is meat for one bone, I mean, what is meat for one could be bone for another. That's yes. from that's what I'm saying upon Bakri. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. You know, that's for good, having that's that. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So um someone Zach Okomo says that I'm excited to know that you're an optometrist or ophthalmologist. Please may I connect with you privately? And I have responded in the comment section openly to say, please, everyone, feel free to follow Mr. Nnamdi Oboli at Nnamdi Oboli on Instagram. Trust me, I have his WhatsApp number. He has not read my WhatsApp message today. <laughs> he responds fastest on Instagram. So I'm not restricting you from him, please. I am so secure in the love of God that God brought him as a father to me and I'm willing to share, even though I'm still the first daughter. But you cannot take my place. <laughs> All right. So the final question, the person says... Um, What's the average time for couples to understand each other's differences and foster smooth communication? That's the no, final I, question. I won't put it at averages because then what's the average length of a marriage? I don't know. I really exactly. don't know. I really don't know. So it's it's not a law of averages that guides yes. these things. I want us to l- remove it from all this um, trying to find average or anything like that. Look mm-hmm. at it like it's the more deliberate you are in getting th- uh, mm-hmm. things done the faster you get to the goal of having intimacy with yourself and communication with yourself, that works. It means I'm trying yeah. to communicate. You see, the man that is not trying to communicate, 
you're not going to talk of average for him because in the next 30 years, he still doesn't understand his wife. He doesn't care to understand his wife. And the woman who is not communicating is not interested mm-hmm. in that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's you. Do you want to get there? If you want to get there, you want mm-hmm. to have a happier home, it can happen in a short time. They are, if you look at it in that sense, a deliberate move to get it done with a mm-hmm. likewise deliberate move from the other side because it all depends on the other person as mm-hmm. well. You may, you may, if you're, if you are really serious about understanding your spouse, you will get to understand them. Then you start acting accordingly. So your behavior towards them with the understanding of who they are will be clearer within a shorter time. I think within a year or two, you should be able to get that. Thank you so much. Wow. We have spent an hour. Sir, please can everybody put a comment saying thank you, Mr. Nandi, in the comment section. Please, let's let's flood in with thank you. Let's flood in with some ads. Thank you, love. thank you, thank you, thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Nandi. Thank Don't you worry, so much. Are, are you also on LinkedIn? Sorry? Okay. Yes, I am on I LinkedIn. Don't know. Yeah. Yes, he is on LinkedIn. Uh, he's on LinkedIn with that same name. Thank you so much, sir. Final words from you, sir. And I will start sharing my slides. I'll have to be fast with my own slides. Because I want to put it early. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Well, well, thanks, everybody, for having me. That's what I'll say. Thank you. Right, is any... Sir. Okay. That- Daddy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you yeah. so, so, so very much. All thank right. you, sir. Okay, now me, I'll be I'll be sure if you are here and I'm speaking. <laughs> so I'm All going right. to start sharing my screen. And right now I'm going to get straight into it in terms of um, communicating with your teenagers because that is my own forte. That's my own strength. That's what I've been doing for over eight years. Parents hire me to speak with their teenagers. Um, NGOs hire me, churches, mosques, you know. Imagine, let me tell you one fun part of my work that I love. So one of the things I do with my teenagers basically is when I want to engage them and I don't want to run a personality test yet, I take them on a movie. So imagine I'm going on a movie with my teenager and my teenager doesn't know that I was hired to be, they are not here tonight, to be is or a mentor or a coach, right? And we are just going to watch a movie. And so while watching the movie, my work is to observe them and then give a report to the parent or the clients that hired me. So I, like I said, once again, thank you and welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to Effective Communication. And I'm sure that you had a wonderful time, you know, learning how to communicate effectively with your spouse, with Mr. Anandi Oboli. I am greatness, A.T. or Lauren Femi, the A. My name is Abigail, the T's, um, Toluloke. And that's my brief profile. I said that earlier. If you joined in late, you can, you know, go to the recording. I will share the replay after this. And so I want us to start by, please, let us be free. If you are a parent or you are an educator or you are an HR or you're a lecturer, because I know we have a lecturer here when we're introducing ourselves, uh, Madam Sinapo is a lecturer, or you are a CEO or your business owner, can you please come um, unmute yourself? You can turn on your video and share with us what are the challenges that you've had in communicating with um, your, sorry, sorry, with your teenagers, please, I'm waiting. So let's have just two people because of time. Is anybody speaking, speaking. to me? Or... Okay. Um, if I may. Please go ahead, please. My name is Zach. Zach, can you pronounce your name so that I, I'm not murdering your name? My name is Zichat Okumoku. Oh, Zit, Zichat. Yes, like you chat with a person with a Z in front of it. So. Oh, wow. the chat, Okomo, amazing. Thank you for correcting me. So I've been mocking your name. I apologize. No problem, no problem. I'm used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a twin, not a teen. And I've had a lot of challenges with communication with her. So um, when I saw this, actually, I was quite excited. I have other younger kids, but she's the first and she's almost a teen. So I'm excited about, okay, 
I really do want to know how to communicate with her because sometimes I make a comment like this and then she goes, I'm saying that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes yeah, no. a major <laughs> So I realized that I'm having communication challenges with her. I'd like to sort that out before I get to her younger. Fantastic. And I love the fact that you are very intentional. Please, can we all celebrate Madame Z chat? Because it, not every parent is as intentional as you are. Now, it was, if you've read my story in this book, Rescued by Love, Why I Canceled My Wedding, it was at the age of 13. I practically used to say that I became fatherless at 13, you know? I lost my relationship with my dad at 13, not because uh, he died, no, but just because we just, you know, the communication thing just fell apart. So thank you, thank you so much. I'm saying this, she's assuming I'm saying this, or she's saying I don't even understand her. That's one. Please, can we have one more? Now, I prefer to have a meal. So that we have, you know, I'm a DEI DEI expert, uh, not expert, advocates, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So please, let's have a a mailman now. Challenges that you're facing in terms of communicating with your teenager, or as an educator, or as a teen mentor, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So if I don't get a response, I will assume that everyone is just open to learning and I'll just go right into it. So I hope you can see my screen. Okay, yes, I can see my screen. Right. So what exactly, please, can we go into the comment section? What do you think? Now, I am a coach, so I don't, I, I'm not wearing my trainer hat tonight. I'm wearing a, a, my coaching hat. What exactly do you think communication is? I want everyone to please respond. Everyone, please try and respond. If you cannot unmute to speak, you can use the chat session, please. What do you think communication is? Oh, I, I already okay. showed you, right? I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yes, please. Yes, please. From yes, my yes, own please. perspective, I believe communication is a two way uh, action where you speak to the person and the person understands it and is able to get back to you the feedback. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. And very, very rare of people to add that feedback. I must say you are a great communicator. Madam Favor, Omar Chuku says, the challenge I experience is that they think we are old school. You're in the right place. Trust me. I know, right? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so let us, let us break it down. Communication is not what you say. <laughs> did that break your table? Did that shatter your table? Communication is not what comes out of your mouth. Communication is what happens in the mind, is what happens in the mind of the other person. Communication is how the other person, okay, Adekunle Adeshino is saying that. It's a process of sending messages and receiving responses. Thank you, thank you. So you can see the screen, right? It is actually how the other person interprets what you say, not the actual words you use. Now, you, re you remember, amazing, Mr. Yinka Legbade says, communication is the transmission of information that is understood by both, I love the fact, understood by both parties. Amazing, thank you. So the key to effective communication is actually producing a shift for the other person whether it is a shift in their focus, awareness, understanding, or what action you want them to take. And it is critical to remember that when you're speaking, they are not really hearing what you're saying. <laughs> Why are you speaking? Teenagers are not hearing you. They are, they are, they are, they are reading your emotion. They are reading your action. They are reading what you, what's your intention behind, behind what you're saying. So the reason why we feel that we're not communicating with them or they are not communicating with us is really, 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 really because when you're speaking, you need to focus. What's your focus? Am I shifting this person's focus? Am I creating awareness? Am I helping them to understand? What action am I trying to help them to take? Right? So. Talking with your child should be something, or your teenager, or your protege should be something you do daily, even when you are busy. 
because it's easier to keep the com conversation with them light so that you can move on to the next thing on our to-do list. Now, talking with people is very easy, but it's also not easy. It requires a lot of intentionality. It's, there are a lot of to-do to lists that sometimes you do not put it on your to-do list to speak with your teenager, to speak with those Gen Z that you feel that, ah, their wala is too much. So I say your child won't tell you this, but he or she needs for you to probe into their inner life on occasion to find out what they are thinking and feeling. And there is a video that I'm going to play for us to watch um, very shortly. Let me quickly download that video because I just remembered now that I didn't download it from my... Um, so just give me a moment. I'm, I'm, and, and, and I use videos to buttress what I am saying because of course, we understand media is so powerful that we understand motion. People engage more with video than pictures and then words. I hope we all know that, right? And so finally, they will intuitively sense that you understand them better because you took the time and energy to really care. When you don't really care, the teenagers know, trust me. And, and let me explain to you, and I'm not saying that you don't really care for them or you and I know that you really care about them, but there are times when you are overwhelmed with situations and circumstances, you are just wondering, oh, they don't get me. And you are occupied with your own issue and they feel that you don't care. So it is important. And there is a, um, there is a class that I host, coaching skills training. Coaching skills training is... Um, basically, one of the, the curriculum in coaching skills training is to move you from being someone that just talks to someone that is an, in, there are different types of listeners, and I'll get to that in my slide, uh, becoming an intuitive listener. An intuitive listener is reading in between the lines. Someone said something to me earlier today that I read your book and I read what you did not say in your book. I read what you were not saying in your book. So communication is actually reading in between the lines to say, this child is saying this. What is this child not saying? And that's why I usually say that you need coaching skills because you have to pro parent your child as a coach. Because as a coach, we are trained, as a coach, we are trained to listen more to nonverbal communication than verbal communication. Because as a therapist, I have to listen to my clients because my clients can be suicidal, right? And so as a therapist, I'm listening to my clients and I'm watching the body language. And that's why if you've ever had a therapy or coaching session with me, if you cannot turn on your video, if it's a virtual session, I'm not going to hold the session because I have to read your sub, sub modalities. I have to read your body language. I have to, and I'm going to get there. I have to listen to your tone i have to understand when your smile is genuine when your laughter is genuine when your surprise is and it's all communication right and so um i'm still on my slide i i pardon me what's what happened so there are different types of communication we all know that right that there is verbal communication and non-verbal communication and Verbal communication only carries just 7% of communication. So I usually say that, <laughs> and there is this video that I would recommend that you watch. No, I'm not going to recommend it yet. Don't let me give you too much information. So when I went to coaching school, there was a particular movie um, because we study, and that's why I, I, I had to go and study filmmaking because I needed to communicate through movies, right? Um, there is a particular movie that we were instructed to study. And one of the things that the behavioral psychologist said is that I don't believe much in words myself. And so verbal communication is actually the way we communicate with words. That is your, the pitch of your voice, the tone of your voice, the way you actually just switch your tone when you want to speak to, you know, some people call something, you know, for spouses, bedroom voice. There, there, there are ways by which you switch your tone, your pitch, 
when you want when when I'm moderating an event, there is a way I speak, right? Dialects is part of communication. Actual words, choosing your words carefully, right? And then understanding, okay, I want to use the word that my teenager or my child understand. Nonverbal communication now is the most is the ninety three percent. So you see why I don't really believe in words so much. And that's why when I want to have a session with you, I would insist that your video has to be on because it involves your facial expression. It involves eye contact. It involves that personal space, your arm gesture, physical touch, that unintentional and intentional communication through your body language. Remember, there's a part on in my slide that I said we are always communicating. I'm a certified neuro-linguistic programming practitioner. And it's one of the, you know, um, what's the word now? The basis on which neuro NLP was founded, that people are always communicating, whether you are aware of it or not. So it includes presence. Like uh, Mr. John, I want you to please, can we all celebrate Mr. John for me, Mr. John Samuel? Please celebrate him for me because um, Nigeria, Stops was the word. My international payment. I used to pay for my Zoom through my Naira account, right? Through my, you know, Mastercard. I don't have a card for my Dom account because basically I save. I I like to save um in that currency, and I don't want to be tempted to just spend it anyhow, right? So I have never thought of asking for a card for my dollar account, and suddenly they banned payment, international payment. And I couldn't pay for my Zoom. And yesterday, he was practically following up with me, like being present. When in a coaching session, we tell our client to say, you have to be present. When, I'm when I work in a coaching school and I teach executives to become professional coaches or parents to you know, get coaching skills, we tell you that number one, your number one weapon as a coach or as an HR professional, a CEO, or someone that is a mentor and educator is your presence. When I know that you're there for me, I know that when the chips are down, I can basically say, oh, she's got my back. Does that make sense? So your teenager wants to know when they know that, oh, um, let me use the name of someone on the call. When my teenager knows that, oh, man, I'm, your teenager says, oh, Madam Claire has my back. Diza has my back. I don't know if Diza is a madam or mister, please. Madam Fatima has my back. That presence is so powerful. And presence is not just physical. And I know that not everyone is, um, is a Christian, but I want to use this particular scripture to define presence. Now, there's a part of the Bible that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I use that to teach presence when I'm teaching um, on communicating and engaging your teenagers. Now, I can leave you and not forsake you. And I can forsake you without leaving you. Have you, have you experienced something before that you are in a room with someone? That person did not leave you, but they are forsaking you because... They did not know the thing you are going through and you are speaking to someone that is miles away because you do not feel engaged. You don't feel connected with them. They are not present to you, even though you are housemate or flatmate or whatever it is. So presence is not just physical, it's emotional. It's, it's more emotional than actually physical. Physical is beautiful because, I mean, um, if he didn't follow up with me to ensure that I paid for the Zoom using his own card, I wouldn't be able to host this meeting tonight on my Zoom platform. The next is perceptive and responsive. So when your teenager wants to know, how do you really perceive me correctly? Or you're perceiving me based on, and I'm going to share on factors that in their communication. So maybe what I'm going to do, because I want to finish at 11, I don't want to stretch us beyond time, except you all say I should continue. Um, that's when I'll continue beyond 11. I want to finish at 11. Um, and I promise you, I'm on slide eight of my slide. We can have a part two. I will do this because it's something I've committed to do. Right. So perception. 
So please stay on the call. Don't feel that, oh, it's almost 11. Let me go and sleep. Don't worry. I, I promise to release you at 11. I'm looking at the time. I promise you. You have my words. Perception. Do you perceive me correctly? Or do you perceive me based on what I have done in the past and you have not forgotten or and you have not forgiven me? Because trust me, these teenagers, this younger generation, they are sponge. They absorb your emotions. And emotion is everything. When you're coming back from work and you're stressed, I know that it's very, very difficult for you to say, oh, I'm going to drop my issues at the door. And the child is just say, hey, mommy, mommy, mommy. Like, hey, please, I'm not in the mood. Or you are the mentor. Or you are a teen's teacher in, um, you know, maybe in, an, in a religious organization or whatever it is. Or you have a teenager like, and do you know what? When you are not responsive, they know. Because we are always communicating. If that is something you will take out today, tonight, please don't forget that my body is actually 93% of communication is nonverbal. So your thoughts and feeling. Now, let me tell you the relationship between your thoughts and your feeling and what you're showing on the outside. What you're showing on the outside is actually as a result of your thoughts. Emotions, please give me a moment. Let me take one more. Yeah. Emotions are actually communication. So when you're, you come into a therapy session with me and I ask you, so welcome, how are you feeling today? I don't even know what I'm feeling. Oh, really? Okay. Tell me what exactly is going on with you. Every emotion stems from a thought. Every emotion. And I usually use this acronym of tea. You know when you take a tea, a cup of tea, right? T-E-A. And I want someone to put that in the comment section. T stands for your thought. E stands for your emotion. And A stands for your action. And so you're not going to say that, oh, I'm just acting somehow. Or I'm just reacting. It's because you are, you are feeling a particular emotion that you are acting somehow. And that emotion is stemming from a thought. So what happens is that, excuse me, you cannot control the thoughts that stays in your, um, that comes to your mind. You can only control the ones that stays, stays. So I am feeling um, hungry and I want to eat. Do you know that you can actually, thank you, Moyo Sore, you can actually switch your emotions such that you will not feel hungry again. So for example, if I am moderating an event or I am facilitating a training like this, even if I've not eaten for days, although please let me be honest with you, I, me and food, we are not really good friends like that, right? But the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to switch your emotion such that you can create a different action, switch your thoughts. Next is your voice, speech, and tonality. When your teenager is saying, Mommy, why are you yelling? You might feel that, oh, I am not yelling, but the person hearing you, because you're sending a message, the person is telling you that you're yelling. And if I, if I, don't, if I don't think I am yelling, and I'm speaking to Muyosore, and Muyosore says, greatness, you're yelling at me. You are yelling because communication is actually how the person feels, how the person in what she's saying, how the person is seeing what she's saying, not necessarily your intention. We cannot see your intention. And guess what? The balance here is that everybody is acting with a positive intention. So it takes a lot of intentionality for you to align your intention with what you're passing across such that you're not communicating wrongly. Last but not the least is just aligning that span of like the time frame and the cognizance to say, oh, my tone, I have to be intentional. I have to make sure that I am not 
communicating what I don't want to communicate. So why do we really communicate? Number one, it's actually for growth and development. If I want to nurture a relationship, I need to communicate in that relationship. If you want to end a relationship, stop communicating with the person. And that's why uh, some singles, uh, I'm sure you've heard this before that they said, oh, you have been ghosted, right? The person just shuts down communication to say, I don't want this relationship to grow. I don't want it to develop beyond where it is. As a matter of fact, I want it to dwindle. So when you're not communicating with either your Gen Z, your partners, and you have a business, you're not communicating, you will leave room for assumptions and everybody will start, you know, you will start losing people. They will not grow. Next, communication. Look at this quote on the right, on my left side says, communication to a relationship is like oxygen to life. Without it, it dies. So communication reinforces your sense of worth and value. Has it happened to you before that when someone is not speaking to you, you feel less of yourself? Please respond in the comment section. We have five more minutes to go and I'll end this um, right now. Has it happened to you before? So we communicate because we want to interact more. We want to build our interpersonal skills. We want to build our relationship. Thank you, Madam Favor. So how do you develop good communication with your teenagers? Number one, time. Thank you, Moyo Store. Time. When you are with me, be present with me. Don't press your phone. These teenagers, these children, they see these things. I'm telling you. you are, they are speaking with you. Yes, A stands for action. Yes, you're very correct. Oh, yes, someone was asking what it stands for. Thank you, uh, Madam Zichat. Z I am, I'm speaking with you and you're pressing your phone and I, I can hear you. No, you cannot hear me. There is a video that when we have our part two, of course in part two, I'm now the only one speaking. So you, you have me all to yourself, <laughs> right? Part two, I'm gonna play a video to you on the myth of multitasking. I don't believe in multitasking. Maybe because I'm a trained coach. In coaching, we tell you, you have to be present. You cannot be pressing your phone and saying you're speaking to someone. Um, someone came to see me earlier today. And, and I, said, I said, please, I need to make this call to Mr. Nnamdi Oboli. I will never tell, like, you will not be present with me. And I will start making a call and I will say, and you just hear me say hello. It will never happen. Number one, it's disrespectful. And don't say, oh, they're they teenagers, they're children. No, because the times have changed. Now, let me tell you the reason why they feel you are old school. They, they feel you are old school because you are treating them like you were treated in your own generation. In your own generation, your parents could be talking to you and pressing phone. Because really, there was really no phone anyway. And even when there was phone, you people know how to now say there was this respect and regard that you would just say, you know, you notice our parents will just look at you so that they will know that you, you have my attention, right? And, but this generation is a generation that is highly distracted. And so I can dwell so much on this time because trust me, teenagers want your time. When, I'm, when parents hire me, they ask me, are you able to understand my children in such a short while? Because I give them quality time. It is not quantity. You have been with your teenager for years and I come in one hour, you pay me for one hour, just the hundred dollars or 75,000 naira, And I give you, this is the report. And you're like, how do you know my teenager like this? It's my job. And it's my job because I give them, I prioritize that time to say, you have me for the next one hour. Nothing else will distract me. No call, nothing. And if it means that when you are with your teenager, your phone, it's, I, I call it no screen policy. No screen policy is that you don't put your phone this way. Can you see this? You know, when the phone rings, you can see it, even though it's on silence. So no screen policy is that it's like this. Can you see that? I don't see it blinking even when it's on silence. I call it no screen policy. So that quality time is very important. I'm going to stop here. Presence, I think I've spoken on that, using that distinction between never leaving you and never forsaking you. To say, um, 
you can leave me, but you cannot forsake me. And you're, that's what your teenagers want. They want your presence. They want that when, and listen to them when they say, oh, my classmates' dad comes on their, you know, PTA meeting or their visiting day or something. They are communicating to you to say, I want you to physically come. And it will mean the world to them than you sending a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million naira to them because well i can use the money to make my friends happy but if your presence your physical presence is what i need it cannot switch it i'm going to pause here tonight um i'll just show you my slide to see uh, i i i i plan to show you how communication leads to trust a lot of our teenagers and Gen Z don't trust us because we don't understand communication. And I'll show you how to do that. Also, there is a part, there's an exercise that we're going to do together. What I wish I knew as a teenager, you would tell me what you wish you knew as a teenager. And I shared mine here. And um, you will see that your teenagers actually have some things they wish you know. Um, what you, I wish my parents knew when I was a teenager, you would tell me that, and we'll do this together. We are going to have a link where I'll share in the chat session. I'll talk about factors affecting communication. I'll talk about, of course, this, I mentioned it earlier because that we are always communicating. I'll show you how you can engage and go beyond just talking. Uh, then I will now break it down to say, now this is how to communicate effectively. This is the breakdown. I'm running you through my slides so that you would, you would not miss part two for anything, not even with a date with Joe Biden. I'm done speaking. Does anybody have any question um, before I call it a night? It's 11 p.m. I promise you I'll finish at 11. Any question? So you can see what I have prepared for you. It's a lot of value. Um, and I was planning to end with this to say it's never too late. If you feel that, oh, I've spoiled, I've ruined some things, it's never too late. I was going to use my example of my Ludo game, but I'll share that in the part two. Uh, of course, you know Thomas Edison, you know, and we'll talk more on that. If you want to hire me as your coach for your teenager or for yourself, please feel free. Um, there is a promo that I am running for the month of April. So you can grab it, only five slots. You pay for one session and I give you four sessions. 75,000 Naira. And um, instead of you having me for one session, I give you four sessions. Am I not gracious enough? So thank you very much. Please feel free to connect with me. You can do a screenshot on any of this social media network. Um, I'm going to announce when part two, since you registered, I'm going to send out a reminder um, on when part two is going to hold. Um, let me see next Thursday. I'm trying to check my calendar. Please feel free to invite other people. You saw the content of my slides is a lot of value. Um, the, the fact that I switched it from pay to free does not mean that I reduced the quality. No, I don't do that. So yes, Madam Zichat says, looking forward to the next part. It's been an awesome... Um, it's been helpful so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You so any much. Any Greatness it has been so, 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 so uh, impactful. I'll have beat Thank myself you. if I didn't attend. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So next week, Thursday, we're going to have the part two so that we wrap this up. Um, it will just be communicating with your teenagers alone and um, have a refreshing night. I love you all. Thank you so much for staying on the call till this time. One and a half hour of your time. I do not take it for granted. Have a refreshing night. I love you so much. Please connect with me and see you next Thursday. Next Thursday. Um, so do we do 9 p.m. or 7 p.m.? Which one would you prefer? I prefer 9 p.m. because people are settled in their homes and they are fine. So 9 p.m. next um, Thursday. I hope that works for us. Let's have your response. You don't want to go. Do you want me to continue? <laughs> Can we hear me? Let me stop sharing.
Okay, 8 p.m. works for you. Um, someone say 8 p.m. Let's have a vote so that we end this in three minutes. I didn't cry. Madam so Moyo, sorry. Which one are you um, recommending? 8 p.m. No, sorry. 8 p.m. is fine. 9 p.m. is fine because I live in Accra. So it's 8 p.m. for me. That's what I meant. Oh, I see. Thank you. So you're joining us from um, Ghana. Thank you. Okay, so everyone agrees to 9 p.m. So 9 p.m. Nigeria, West African time next Thursday. Let's wrap this up. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, thank you so much. And please feel free to invite someone to register. Still the same link. I'll make it recurrent right now um, such that you can join in using the same link. You're not, you just go back to that same mail and just use that to register. I love you all and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for, you know, listening to me and not leaving the call after Mr. Nambi left.